Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Monica. I like to post anti-MLM and some life content here on this channel. In today's video, I am interviewing Sarah. She is also a content creator here on YouTube. I will leave her link below. She interviewed me and her video has already gone live on her channel, so I will also leave a link to that particular video below. Anything said in this video is just for entertainment purposes only, and just to talk about our opinions and our experiences with MLMs. Also, I was recording while I was at the store. When I do these one-on-one um, -on -one interviews, I do have to do it in the front of the store because that's where all of my equipment is for these particular videos. So, of course, if there's any giant cuts in it, it's because someone had come in or whatever the case may be. And also, there are a few more highway noises that are also in this particular video. So I do apologize for that. But without further ado, let's get into the interview with Sarah. Um, but yeah, so let's just get into this interview. Um, tell us about, I guess, yourself or your channel and your experience with MLMs. Uh, thanks for having me on. I'm Sarah from the Catholic Homemaker. Um, I have a blog and a YouTube channel, and I've really been getting into content creating this year. My channel's all about faith, homemaking, motherhood, and health. Um, I'm a certified health coach, and so a lot of my content is especially about health, too. Um, but I've started sharing about my anti-MLM experience on my videos as well. And I haven't done it yet, but I do have plans on making videos on each of my MLM experiences, which is a total of 11 that I've actually joined. And it's like really shameful to me <laughs> to admit, but um, I'm glad that I finally learned my lesson and hopefully I can help others to um, not fall into that trap like I did so many times. Yeah, so I guess since you've been part of 11 of them, which one, if you want to say which one, you can, but which one do you think, I guess, you lost the most time or money with out of all of those? Hmm. That's... There's probably a couple in there. Um, one of the first ones I joined was doTERRA. And so I probably made almost nothing with that because I don't even know if I got a single person to buy from me, but I was just like a good customer for a few months. Um, and I still have their oils like seven, eight years later. <laughs> eight years later. But I'm like, I still want to use them even though it's a sunk cost. <laughs> Um, so there's that, and then, um, what's the other one? Perium, I guess, is one where a month or two ago I stopped my, um, my auto ship, I think it's called. Um, so they're one of the companies where you have to spend a minimum amount to get paid, which is so stupid. Um, but I think that's probably up there, um, even though I was getting a paycheck, I, didn't actually like break even. Um, it was coming close, but um, let me take a look if there's one more that I just really did bad in. Oh, my essence. My essence, I think, was the one I probably lost almost everything because, um, yes, I used the products, um, but like getting paid was so hard, especially because they were an Australian company. So they had like, I think a minimum amount you had to get paid. Um, and I like almost didn't make that minimum amount to get paid by the bank or something. Um, so yeah, that was, that was a lot of money. <laughs> okay. So obviously I know that you're a mom. I don't know if anyone who's watching this knows that you're a mom, <laughs> but um, my question, I know we kind of briefly spoke about this before we started the video, but um, with you being a mom, do you feel that you have, I guess, had more pressure from when you were in the MLMs from your uplines or anything like that of, you know, just not necessarily, you know, some hunbots, they shame moms and stuff that like you're not spending enough time with your kids or, you know, you're not contributing to the household or whatever the case may be. Um, did you ever have an experience kind of like that with any of your uplines? Um, for the most part, I did not, but I, there was one particularly 
particular one, and it's like the one I'm most embarrassed of that I ever joined was Monate. Um, one of my uplines, I, it was more on the side of you're not like contributing to your household. Um, cause she got very angry at me one time cause she thought I was making excuses, um, for not making sales. And I'm pretty sure she was just getting angry cause she wasn't making money for me. Um, but yeah, it, she was getting angry about, um, like other, she gave examples of other people on the team. Like they, they work in the bar. They, they do all these other things. Everybody has a sob story, but you know, you can easily do it. Get off your ass or something. Um, does she afraid. have, does she have kids? Yes, she does. Oh, <laughs> okay. Cause I was going to say, if she doesn't have kids, maybe that's why she was trying to throw those, those right. excuses in there. <laughs> no, but she, she's always been very driven. Like, um, she, I don't know if she necessarily stayed home with her kids. I think she had a nanny, um, or I don't know if she still does, but, um, she would always like work on her stuff, um, whatever that was and have childcare. That must be nice. Um, and I feel as though a lot of times in MLMs, they don't give moms enough credit, I guess. And, I don't know. That's that's why I wanted to ask you if you ever felt pressured because I feel as though they just try to shame. Now it's not so much, you know, just one target market. Now it's just a bunch of people. They're shaming, mm -hmm. you know, basically anyone. <laughs> um, but I feel as though they do tend to target moms. So, but I do know that you also did MLMs prior to being a mom and prior to being married, right? Right. Um, yeah, briefly before being married, just just two and. Um, the first one I ever joined was Avon and I didn't really do a whole lot with that, but it was like right out of college and I had all these student loans and I was thinking it was like a little way for me to make a little extra money to pay for those student loans. Um, but yeah, I didn't end up making really any money. Um, if you count like what I spent on the makeup, but. I actually did try looking into Avon and they have a lot of stuff like under wraps. They, um, I tried looking up an income disclosure statement. There's nothing like there's no information. Oh, yes. I did the same thing recently. I, I saw that like 2008 was the last year mm -hmm. that they ever had an income statement. So I'm like, Hmm, that's a little fishy. <laughs> yes. That's, that's a decade ago. <laughs> and there's no updated information. That's a little, I know that, um, technically if they're privately owned, they don't have to disclose that information, but I always find it kind of strange when an MLM company is like, oh, well, I'm, I'm just, we're not going to tell you what the income disclosure statement is, but that's also my opinion. That's of course my opinion. Right. <laughs> um, but I guess the, the three MLMs that you said were probably the worst ones. Um, do you want to tell us a little bit more about your experience with those? Yeah, sure. With, with doTERRA, um, I was actually introduced to that by a friend um, from church. She was, I mean, she was just kind of a good friend of mine. And um, I had previously heard about doTERRA from bloggers that I had followed because I, I always follow a lot of health bloggers. And um, I had heard people talking about like how they were the only company that had therapeutic grade essential oils and like they were the they made it sound like they were the only pure essential oils out there. And so naturally, I thought for that, um, especially trusting some of the bloggers that I follow. And so when she introduced me to it, I had already heard of it. And she just invited me to a party. Okay. So she had recently become a rep. And I didn't realize that until going to the party. Um, but I was just like really excited by all these oils. I'm like, I want to own them all, blah, blah, blah. And so I like, I ended up joining as a distributor. I can't remember how much it costs to do that. Um, but it's that monthly cost where it really gets you. Um, cause she said, she explained to me that if you wanted to get paid and her upline had explained this to her as well, that you were missing out on getting paid. Um, by not buying a certain amount per month. It's like, I don't know if it was a hundred or $200 a month. So like 
if you're paying 100 or 200 dollars a month you have to at least get paid that much to break even mm -hmm. um, which never happened for me <laughs> Yeah, that where you have to build a team. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and so even before I joined, I saw that compensation plan, like that each one of these MLMs gives you the compensation plan. And some of it can be like really confusing, but I saw it and it was shaped like a pyramid. And so that immediately made me suspicious. Like even like, can you believe I fell for that? <laughs> I was suspicious. And I told her, I was like, this looks like a pyramid scheme to me. And she said, oh, I thought this the same thing. And believe me, my dad was part of a pyramid scheme before, but this is not it. And I was like, okay. I mean, she she explained a little more than that. Um, like part of the background, she was in Russia. And I think she said like, maybe they're prevalent there. I don't know. But, um, yeah. but she said that, no, this was not a pyramid scheme. So even in spite of um, my suspicions, I ended up joining. Um, but I didn't stay with them for very long. I, I don't know exactly how many months I did it for, but maybe like a few to several months. And then I just kind of stopped buying because it was just getting very expensive. And, um, I think one of the reasons I actually left too, is because I started to see negative, um, stories about doTERRA and Young Living, um, just how they had synthetic fragrances, um, like actually from lab reports too, like people had confirmed this. Um, so I was like, oh, this is really bad. I don't know how they can get around that, but he, obviously people still fall for it or buy it today. Um, well, did you, did you watch Savannah Marine's video about Young Living and how that one blogger, she um, sent out the essential oils to get third party lab tested and they saw just how pure the oils actually were? I think so. I think I saw that a couple months ago. Um, but yeah, I might have seen the same thing. On yeah. That. that was like several years ago. Um, but yeah, there was that. And then I also saw some people starting to talk about ingesting essential oils, how that can be really harmful. Mm -hmm. And I just realized like the, the reason doTERRA and Young Living are telling everybody to ingest it and like all these different uses for them. It's like, so people will keep buying it or so the distributors will keep buying it and being good customers. But it's actually really harmful advice because um, one of the things it can do is act like an antibiotic in your body. Mm -hmm. And I mean, maybe some people are okay with that, but like me personally, um, I try to avoid antibiotics as much as I can just because it can really disrupt your good gut bacteria. Um, it's, it's just interesting that they're promoting this healthy lifestyle and um, that it can also act like an antibiotic in your body, but mm -hmm. they think that it's, that can, it, it can be healing to your body. So I don't know. I guess it's maybe the lies that they're believing. <laughs> Well, there's um, the one video that I did, the one about the women's wisdom circle, um, the woman that I was talking to that sent me that whole story, because she she typed out chapters like it was literally a, a short story that I was reading. And um, she had told me that um, I guess I don't remember exactly what it's called, but you can get certified to work with essential oils. And there's like a whole science behind it and a whole education behind it. And um, she was actually saying in the in a separate email to me, she was saying how all of the people that were teaching her about essential oils, they were all saying the same thing. Um, you know, don't ever ingest it. That was like the number one thing is like, don't ever ingest it. So I don't know if that has to do with the synthetics and the additives that are being put into the oil or if it's just certain, I really, I don't, I don't know. No, it's, it's harmful whether it's synthetic or a natural essential oil. Um, it's just like, what I've heard from people who are giving out advice without MLMs is that um, you want a certified aromatherapist to give that advice to you or your doctor, but you definitely don't want some distributor um, who has no background in that telling you. Yeah. Health advice. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the other two MLMs that you had pointed out as like the top three that were probably 
um, what it, what did I say that it was like not the worst one, but it was like the most time consuming and stuff. Right. Um, well, they weren't necessarily too time consuming, but losing the most money. And okay. the other two I mentioned were my essence Imperium. And I think the reason I lost more is because both of those you have to have auto ship in order to get paid, just like doTERRA, I guess. Um, mm -hmm. So ones that require you to buy products every single month to get paid are typically ones I would think that most people would lose money with. Yeah, that was um, with my experience with Beachbody. It was um, as a coach, you had to have a certain amount of PV and it just so happened that if you had Shakeology on auto ship, that that would make up for the PV for the month. So you would be set. So you didn't have to buy anything else. It was just a Shakeology. But the Shakeology, even with the coach's discount, it is a pretty hefty penny to pay a month. Um, I mean, if you're if you're using it every day as like a meal replacement, which I've read a lot of things saying that it's not a meal replacement, but at the time I was told that it was a meal replacement. Um, and that was on auto ship. Now when I canceled my whole coaching thing i canceled being a customer and everything like that um i had to call beachbody multiple times for them to actually cancel the subscription because even though i had the confirmation and everything they were still charging me okay. so i had to yeah so that's why whenever i hear of someone saying like you know i'm part of an mlm that has something on auto ship i'm always like well, good luck when you decide to leave or when you're no longer a customer because you might have a problem with that. <laughs> Thankfully, I didn't have that kind of issue with either okay. one. It, I didn't even um, get a peek from my upline on the Perium one, but that may be because she's no longer talking to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's another thing that I just, I just came up with another question for you. Um, because you've been part of 11 MLMs um, in each of those, obviously nowadays, I don't know how it was in all of the ones that you were in, but obviously they're all preaching about the MLM sisterhood and how you're gonna have, you know, an empowering group of women and all that kind of stuff. When you left the MLMs, did that sisterhood disappear for you? See, I was never really part of that. That that never attracted me to an MLM. Because um, I, I guess in the back of my mind, I knew that wasn't like a real type of friendship. Like they were making mm -hmm. money off of me. Um, one person, um, I'm still friends with her with, with Beauty Counter. I actually reached out to her to, to join. So that was like a whole different story. But um with the other ones, um, I didn't have anything nasty come out of it, except um, I kind of fizzled out of Monate just silently because I didn't want there to be any fallout because my upline was um, probably would have made a lot of drama. <laughs> <laughs> I just yeah. kind of, and I think she kind of suspected it, um, but I just. I really didn't want to fight it, try to listen to or try to prove that the lawsuit, the, the lawsuits um, had no ground. Um, she was kind of doing like deep research saying like, oh, it was um, it was a hairstylist um, who even started that group. There, there's a Facebook group that what was it? My Monate Nightmare or something. My modern mm -hmm. nightmare. Yeah, it was um, that woman that started it. She actually lost a ton of hair and she was claiming, of course, this is alleged because there's no like scientific proof. But um, she apparently because I, I talked about this in my Monet video, um, she contacted Monet and told them what happened and they wouldn't refund her. So she decided she would just, you know, let it go. But then she started talking to other people and the same thing happened to them. And of course, when you have a disgruntled customer, they really, you know, blow it up. And that's basically what she did. And that's why that's where all the lawsuits and stuff came from, um, was a lot of people were coming out of the woodwork and saying this. I just had um, today or yesterday, I had someone request to join my anti MLM group. And they had actually mentioned in like the membership um, questions that um, they became more anti-MLM after their hairstylist used Monet products on their hair and they noticed a change. 
um, they had like a rash or something like that on their head. Now, of course, we don't know for sure if it's Monet. This is all alleged, but I mean, it seems to be the same story every time. But I'm sorry, I cut you off. So go back to your story. I, well, I was also going to say about all those um, stories from Monet. Thankfully, I never had anything like that happen in my hair. I only used the products for about four weeks. And then as soon as I heard about people losing their hair, I was like, okay, I'm stopping right now. Mm. I'm like, I definitely don't want to risk losing my hair. Yeah. Else happening. Yeah, I don't think any girl wants to lose their hair. <laughs> <laughs> I was also um, postpartum at the time. Like, I think my daughter was like eight, nine months old. Um, I think she was 10 months by the time I stopped using it. But um, I was also concerned about her, too, because if they're saying it was unsafe for people to use, I'm like, I definitely don't even want to use it around her at all. I didn't ever put it on her head, but um, yeah, it was like really concerning to me, especially as like someone who's really into health and natural living. Yeah, I guess. Um, is there anything that you think the public should know? about MLMs from whether it be your experience or experiences of others that you've talked to or just something that you want to put out into the world? I would just say that with all the experiences that I've had, and I've had a lot, so I think it would be funny if somebody said I'm not credible. But <laughs> 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 um, with all the experience that I have had, um, I would just say it doesn't work. Um, because a lot of them I tried to make work as a blogger. And yes, I am a small time blogger. Um, but I think ultimately you have to recruit people in order to make money. And I even see like bigger bloggers trying to recruit people. So um, what does that really say about their income? Mm -hmm. I mean, nobody knows except them, of course, what they're making. But in me, with my experiences, I... I never made a profit off of any of them. If you count the money that I put into the products, even though I personally use them. Um, but you know, as a blogger, like if you join an affiliate program, you don't have to put any sort of money into an affiliate. Nope, not um, at all. <laughs> I mean, the, their argument is that you get paid less with affiliates. I think sometimes you do, but sometimes you get paid more. It just depends. The thing that um, that they also don't know is because I've seen like a lot of what I've noticed and this is just from what I've seen on like, you know, Instagram and stuff like that. But especially the Monet and the Arbonne Huns, um, they always try to target the influencers in the world. And then they also try to say like, you know, um, I mean, you being a blogger and everything, I'm sure that you understand how sponsorships work and how all of that kind of stuff works. So you understand what kind of money can be made in this industry. Well, they will sit there and say, you know, oh, how much are you getting for that affiliate link? I'm getting this much more. But what these Monet and Arbon Huns, I mean, it's all of them in general, but I've been noticing that they've been targeting the influencer industry the most. But what they don't understand is that there's influencers out there who have a giant Instagram following and they're literally just on Instagram promoting products and they're getting thousands of dollars for just posting one picture. So, and I mean, it, they have to have a large following for that, but what they're not understanding is that even the micro influencers, like even the small, small people in, you know, the influencer industry, they can also make a decent amount of money. Of course, it's not going to be a consistent amount because it depends on campaigns and stuff like that. And, you know, what I guess the company is looking for in a blogger or influencer at the time. But I don't think that they realize that bloggers don't just rely on affiliate links. They have sponsorships. They have, you know, anything like that. And mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, and ads. Yeah, and, and all that stuff. So I don't think that they really understand just how much some of these influencers are actually making <laughs> so it's, yeah it's funny you mention that because i know um those are the people that i tried to recruit like there are only a couple times where i actually got somebody to recruit and it wasn't like from a blogger it was like somebody i personally knew and i feel really bad about that now but um just 
those are the people I tried to reach out to because I'm like, oh, well, they could make extra money blogging and it's really not that bad for them. But now I understand why that a lot of them never even responded because probably they were anti-MLM or um, they're probably really choosy about who they decide to um, promote to their audience, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and also with the rise of, like, the hey, hon, and the hey, girl message, like, at one point, my inbox was just, like, filled with those messages, and I didn't even bother to respond. In the beginning, I would respond and say, like, you know, I'm really sorry, but I'm re that's not really my thing, and I would try to be nice about it, but there's one girl that I know, I'm friends with her, and she told me that there was this one Beachbody coach that was consistently messaging her at least once, two times a month, like, she was you know, bugging her for the first month or so. And then she just consistently kept going every month. And it was, um, I think it was almost a year that she finally, <laughs> and like, and she would just leave her on red and like not respond. Cause in the beginning she responded and she was like, no, I'm okay. And then finally she, she texted me and she was like, I'm, I'm just going to block them because they don't get the hint. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, that's, that's dedication right there. <laughs> yeah. I would have given up a long time. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's the thing is that they don't understand that no means no. And I know that, I don't know if the same thing was said to you, but for me, when I was in, um, when I was in MLMs, they told me that no, doesn't mean no, it just means not right now. Yeah. And I remember, <laughs> I remember sitting there and I'm just like, well, I'm pretty sure that when I say no to someone, I mean, no, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, uh, you obviously you got the same narrative so <laughs> yeah it's I mean it's really amazing to me how similar it is across MLMs just the messaging the the tactics and I know we talked about this on my video just we kind of theorized that um it was just people leaving one MLM starting another and so that's where kind of the same culture tactics come from um, I would just say, like I said, you're really not going to make any money with it. Oh, and my brother shared a statistic with me. Um, maybe we can find the source of this, but he said there's a statistical improbability for more than 4% of people to make money in an MLM. Okay. So that is a really bad odd. Um, I know in most of the anti-MLM videos out there, it's like 99 or 99.9% .9 of people don't make money or lose money. Um, but if you look at that statistical improbability, 4%, um, no more than 4% making money, that's really bad odds too. Then also, if you're looking for that sisterhood, it's not real because I've heard of so many people um, losing what they thought was a sisterhood or friendships after leaving and even though I didn't consider it a friend, um, a sisterhood, like I never really talked to any of those people anymore that I was connected with. So that kind of shows you that it's not really a true friendship. They don't really care about your life other than you making them money. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so. I guess we'll end it there. Um, thank you so much for coming on my channel and doing this interview with me. Um, and we'll probably do more in the future. Thank you for having me. It was such a pleasure to talk to you. Yeah. All this. <laughs> <laughs> if you have watched up to here, thank you so much for watching. Uh, please let me know if you like these types of videos in the comment section below because I do have a few people that I do want to talk to and interview who are willing to actually come on my channel without um, you know, having to stay anonymous. A lot of people in these situations, they do like to stay anonymous. So when I can find people who are willing to speak out because I feel as though when there are people who have been in MLMs, it's not diminishing anyone else who is anti-MLM or who is part of the anti-MLM community because there is a ton of research out there as well. But when someone has been in an MLM and they're speaking out outside of the MLM and talking about why they became anti-MLM, I do feel that it gives the community a little more credibility because it's not just us 
hating it or never trying it before. There are people in this anti-MLM community that have been in these MLMs and we have our opinion and there's a reason why we have become anti-MLM. So I guess that's all that I have for you guys today. Make sure to like, dislike, subscribe, support me on Patreon, check me out on all social media. Everything is always linked below. Don't forget to also check out my merch. I've added some new items in there and I'm constantly always thinking of new items to add in there. Just so you guys also know, I don't really make a large commission off of specific products that are in there because I did want to lower the prices. The prices will eventually go up, but for the time being, because I'm fairly new to it, I did want to keep the prices as low as possible for you guys so that it's a little more affordable. But um, yeah, okay, this is a really long outro. <laughs> but anyway, I'll see you guys next time. This is Monica reporting to you live from a highway.